Hey there, Mr. Weaver here, and this is 8th grade, module 9, lesson 2, congruence and corresponding parts. After this lesson, you need to be able to use the properties of rotations, reflections, and translations to identify congruent parts of congruent figures and to find missing measures. Let's learn corresponding parts of congruent figures. In the figure, the two triangles are congruent because DEF is the image of ABC just reflected across line M. The parts in our two figures, our pre-image and our image, that match are called corresponding parts. To indicate that sides are congruent, or that they're corresponding, an equal number of tick marks are drawn on those sides. So for example, AB has one tick mark, DE has one tick mark as well. Those are corresponding sides. They are congruent when we're dealing with reflections, rotations, or translations. We can see that BC has two tick marks, so does EF. Those would be corresponding and congruent. And AC along with DF have three tick marks. For the angles, corresponding angles are shown with a number of arcs drawn. So angle A has one arc, so does angle D. Those are corresponding, they are congruent, so they would have the same measure. E and B, they're not using an arc, but they're using the right angle symbol. So we would know that they are also congruent, since they both have it. C and F both have two angle marks, showing those two are congruent, they are corresponding, so they would have the same measure. When we're dealing with this whole thing, and as we're going through this lesson and future things when we're dealing with congruence, we will see a notation that looks like this, triangle ABC, and then this symbol right here with triangle DEF, that is read as triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF. So this symbol here looks like an equal sign with a little squiggle over it, sort of like a combination between the is equal and the approximately equal, it has three lines, that is the congruent symbol. So let's put this all together. If two figures are congruent, then their corresponding sides are also congruent, and their corresponding angles are congruent. We just saw with our picture here, the things that match in each of the figures are congruent. So overall, triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF. Our angles, A is congruent to D, we can see that with our one arc here. B is congruent to E, both have the right angle. C and F both have double arcs. For our sides, AB is congruent to DE, BC and EF both have the two tick marks, and CA and FD have three tick marks. Example 1. Write congruence statements. Write congruence statements for the corresponding parts in the congruent triangle shown. Use the matching arcs and tick marks to identify corresponding parts. So for this, our corresponding sides, we're going to try to match them up. So JK is right here. It has one tick mark. So which does it correspond to? Find the one tick mark. That would be GH. And remember it has a little bar over it to show that it is a line segment. KL has three marks. So which one has three marks? That would be HI. And then LJ or JL has two tick marks. That would correspond to IG. So our congruent statements for the sides, segment JK is congruent to segment GH, segment KL is congruent to segment HI, segment LJ is congruent to segment IG. If you have the letter switched around, it will mean the same thing. So if you put HG instead of GH, it will mean the same thing. For the corresponding angles, we're going to look for the arcs. So angle J here has one arc. Which one does it correspond with? That would be angle G. Angle L has two arcs, so that must correspond to angle I, and K has three, so it must correspond with angle H. Our congruent statements then, angle J is congruent to angle G, angle L is congruent to angle I, angle K is congruent to angle H. Take time to pause and reflect. Using the terms corresponding parts and congruent figures, Explain how to write a statement showing that two figures are congruent. Pause the video now and write down your thoughts. 
Check your understanding. Using the picture shown, complete each congruence statement. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. So for our corresponding angles, for congruent statements, angle A and M both have one arc. B and N both have two. Those would be corresponding and are congruent. For K and S, be careful, they're all 90 degrees. So if we're looking at what happened, K is below B, so the one that it would be paired with would be below N, which is O. S is below A, so we want the one that's below the one that corresponds to M, so it would be with P. So be careful, especially if some things are the same like these are. For our corresponding sides, AB corresponds to MN. We have four tick marks here on the top. BK has three, so NO has three. KS had two tick marks. So OP had two tick marks, and then SA had one tick mark, so PM with one tick mark. I'm attempting to go in a similar orientation as if they are just one figure reflected. So A went to B, M went to N. Take time to pause and reflect. Did you make any errors when completing that check exercise? What can you do to make sure that you don't repeat that error in the future? If you did not make any errors, Write down a quick trick you can share with a classmate about how to remember what to do. Pause the video now and write down your thoughts. Example two, find missing measures. Liliana is using a brace to support a tabletop. In the figure, triangle BCE is congruent to triangle DFG. If the measure of angle CEB is 50 degrees, what is the measure of angle FGD? So here we can see in our picture, CEB, that middle letter is where your vertex is. So CEB is 50. We can also see this little 90 degree symbol here. So we know two angles. We could fill in the other and say that it's 40. The three add up to 180. We don't necessarily need to do that, but using these three angles, we know that these are the same thing, so all the angles here should correspond to same measures of angles in our other triangle. What is the measure of FGD? So FGD. I want to know what G is, so what is the corresponding part to it? CEB and FGD are corresponding parts here. I know that CEB, we just said that this was 50, so if that corresponds, then FGD also would be 50. If we wanted to know FDG, so this angle down here, we could pair it with angle B over there. We said that that was 40, so angle D must be 40. We can use our corresponding angles will be the same. Check your understanding, read through the situation, and figure out the measure of angle X. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. You should have said angle X is 110 degrees. If measure of B is 110, so here's 110, this is just a reflection across like the middle there. So C would correspond with Y, B with X, A with W, D with Z. If B is 110, then X is that same angle reflected across. So it would also be 110. 